Good morning from another video. How are you? It's been a while. I know. It's been a while since I've been on my bike. Uh, well, it's been a while since I've done videos. I've been on my bike. But uh, it's been a while since I've done a long ride. I think it was before I went to Buffalo, I did the uh, did the one around Montgomery City to uh, do the perm route for Randoners USA. Got the New Jersey on. It's time to do a, it's time to do a long ride. I'm probably trying to plan around 60, 70 miles today. We'll see how it goes, see how the weather is. But uh, one thing I want to do, talk about this light. This is the sine wave beacon. And the light is superb. I have got no complaints with the light. I this was on this was on uh back order for 6 months. So in the meanwhile I was waiting for this. I got a KSI trail beam and the light was not great. I've got to be honest. And I've done a couple of night rides with this and I've really really can't complain about the light it emits at all. But what I want to talk about is the this charger. When you when when you're uh, riding in the day, you flick the switch to the middle and it just this, this charges, you know, the, the, you've got your USB outlet and it, it charges things, which is really good if you're bikepacking or doing a 60K or a, even a 400K, you know, and you start running out of juice in your phone and stuff. And it just, it just gives you that little sense of security. So what we're going to do today is we're going to charge this phone as we go. We're going to see how fast it charges something. I'm pressing the power button. This is an old Pixel 4a I've got. I'm pressing the power button, it is dead as a dodo. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug it in and we're gonna ride for 60, 70 miles or so, you know, maybe four or five hours. And we're gonna see how much charge it's got at the end of the ride. So as I say, I can, I'm really happy with the the light output, but I wanna see how it does with the uh, the trickle charging. Ah, straight out of the parking lot, look at that. That's no bueno, I'll have to find a way around this. Shoot. What are you gonna do? All right, operation detour is in effect. So I made it, I had to do a little hike a bike. Uh, but we are on the Madison County trails today. I started in Collinsville. Sorry about the wind. It's a bit windy. Uh, Madison County trails, yeah, Collinsville. I've got a uh, 60 mile route I do out of O'Fallon. Illinois on these road on these trails, which I really like. I really like these trails. I like the way they all loop up together. But I'm gonna try and do a bit more today. Starting in Collinsville, and this is the uh, schoolhouse trail, I believe. But then we're gonna jib up to Marine Alhambra, and then go up on the roads up to uh, I think it's New Douglas, Staunton, and then head back towards Edwardsville and rejoin the uh, MCT again. All right, all right, let's go for a bike ride. So on the Heritage Trail, heading up towards Marine right now. Marine seems to be a constant stop I do on this, on this trail. It's, it's got a nice little park and a water source. And I'll head up to Alhambra on the roads and uh, there's a gas station at Alhambra. I can snag something to eat. So what's the care? What's going on? Great podcast by Geraint Thomas, that was okay. Listen to it, get it in your ears. Uh, I'm either at work or I've been spending my mornings watching La Vuelta. I hope Seth Coos continues his merry way. I left this morning, it was the time trial this morning. So I hope he's still in red when I get back. And not, I hope he does well, not because of the patriotism aspect and the fact he's an American. But, you know, he's, he's won a stage. It's one stage of the tour. Every single time, either Primoz or uh, Jonas Fingergu gets a win, he, he's, he's been on the team. He, it's time, man. It's time, Sep, you know. Put your meat on the barbecue. And uh, let's show that you're a contender. I've got some sweat in my eyes. So. Yeah, I hope he does well. I hope he does well. It'd be, it'd be good. I don't think the US has had a grand tour with it since Horner. And you know, then you go back to Hampstead in the Giro and then Greg. Oh, watch the the last rider. Loved it. Loved it. It doesn't tell you much. 
Well, it, 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 it's an expanded version of the 30 for 30 that ESPN did in Slaying the Badger. But it's more about the eight seconds victory over Fignon. And I like Laurent Fignon. You know, I think he gets a bad rap. You know, he was a two -tour time tour winner. He won the Giro, he won Milan San Remo. He, he, you know, he was a world class athlete. But all ever, all ever people remember about him is the, the eight seconds he lost to Le Mans. And I, I think at the end of the movie, they, they touch on that, that he was a world class athlete. But he was also a bit of a dick too. <laughs> So, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. I, found, found, I bought it on Amazon Prime. Well, I bought it on Amazon. It cost, you know, 12, 13 bucks to buy it. But I own the movie and I really enjoyed it. I watched it a couple of times now. And Greg Lamont, to me, he was the first sportsman that I really respected that wasn't from my country. You know, growing up in England, you know, it, it was unnatural for me to really respect a, a foreign athlete. You know, Robert Miller was my dude. And uh, I'm glad they race together. Anyhow, I'm holding my phone out like this and it's, it's not safe and I should really put it down. And my arm's aching now because I've talked for three minutes. So I'll see you when I get to Marine. Hello from Marine. Ah, uh, just shy of 30K already. Uh, well, an hour and 15 done. That's all right. I think I've got the wind behind me. The, uh, there's a flag over there that's it's kind of limp, but there's a couple of gusts. I think it's going to get stronger later as I head up to uh, Staunton and then come back south. I'll be probably straight into the wind. But that's okay. I need it. I need it. Paris Press Paris was this weekend. Well, last weekend. And the two people that I follow that were doing it both DNF'd. Uh, Ricky Lake. I enjoy his bikepacking YouTube channel. He, uh, he went arse over to it and broke his clavicle. And then Adam Watkins, the watch out for gout guy from Bristol, he got chicken pox. Which, you know, that's bad enough. I mean, he, he looked after himself. He got a hotel at Drew in the first control and took care of himself. And he, the crazy thing is, right, I mean, you can watch this on his channel, it's Adam, Adam Watkins. And uh, he was getting on the bus to go back home with uh, his Audax club. And they basically threw him off the bus because he was, uh, you know, they, they were worried about you know, it being contagious. The, the fact is that he'd already gone to a doctor and got a safe to travel note saying he wasn't contagious, but they threw him off anyway. And, you know, I think that was a shitty thing to do. You know, no, if you don't want to be on the bus with him, then you go to Charles de Gaulle Airport and you fly home separately. But you don't leave a sick guy behind. He's had a bad enough time as it is without you dumping him in a foreign country. So, oh. As, as he said, some people I think need to give their head a wobble. You know, no one's no one's forcing you to be on that bus either. You know, so felt felt bad for uh, Adam and Ricky, but you know, a guy from Detroit, Randoners, did an amazing time. I heard so fair play to him. I just got to get out there. I got I got to keep plugging away and, and getting to the point where I'm, I'm confident I can do things like that. I don't think PVP is going now for another four years, so I got plenty of time to practice. I've got plenty of time to get there. But there's other, there's super, other super randonies going on in the meanwhile. Maybe I can look and find, you know, the, there was the Arctic ride in Sweden. I can look at that. That looks fun. You know, in the middle of summer, the sun doesn't go down. I think Spencer and from Kansas City did that a couple of years ago. But I just got to get to the point where I feel confident if I put the investment of money to go to do something like that, that I can actually do it. You know, I went up to Wisconsin two months ago for that 600K and it, I bailed on it. You know, I, I can say that, you know, the, the thunderstorm in the middle of the night put pay to it, but I just wasn't there yet. I just, I don't think I'd have completed it anyway. I think I probably would have got back to the hotel after 400K and slept for 12 hours instead of getting up after four and finishing it off. But we'll see, we'll get there. All right, upward and onward. This is Marine Road. I'm heading up to the Nickel Plate Trail. Lots of corn, lots of soy. Was hoping for some sunflowers, but they're not to be. Love it out here. So glad I got out today. So glad I got out today. It's 
right now I am, we'll see how I am in about three hours, but beautiful day, quiet roads, trails, little towns. I don't have a time limit, I don't have to like rush home and get the kids off the bus either today because my lady wife's at home, she can do it. So I'm like, all right, I may be a while. There's nothing better. There is nothing better. So just coming through Alhambra now, just stopped for some tea and a snack, but we've got the map here. So here we are, we started around here. Went up there, up there, over to Marine. This is Marine. Then we went up Marine Road and up to some Alhambra here. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to New Douglas, to Staunton, and then straight back on the on the MCT. I'm gonna go around there and back. This was this was the bit that was closed, but it wasn't too bad uh, once you get past this area. It was just really lightly used right now because obviously a portion of it's closed, so they haven't cleared the uh, the twigs and leaves and branches and stuff that were littering the trail. But you can see here, you've got seven or eight loops that different loops you can do. And, and the way they all connect, the, the Madison County trails should, should be way more famous in this area than they are. You know, people bang on about the Katy Trail all the time. This is brilliant. It's perfect for cycling. Just had to do my best Peter Sagan impression because two big black dogs bolted out of a front yard. God, guys, come on, you live next to a bike trail. You know, secure your dog. I mean, I've got two dogs, don't get me wrong, and sometimes they get away from their electric fence. But goodness me. Goodness me. Honestly, I thought they were gonna rip my shoes off. Sweating carbs, I seriously had to sprint there. Goodness me. All right. I say all right, it's every like, clip I do. A little bit of old glory there. This is Main Street, New Douglas. Love these little towns. So I just, as I say, just got off the Heritage Trail. Now I'm heading to Staunton, where I can pick up another of the Madison County Trail Spurs. They'll take me all the way back down into Edwardsville. Alrighty, made it to Staunton. Population 5100. The uh, wind has noticeably picked up. But again, if I yeah, you know, I mean, it's not going to get any better as we head into fall, so now I'll embrace it. It was 70k for the day, so over halfway. If I'm planning on doing 100, I think 120, so over halfway. I'm going to turn left southbound back towards Edwardsville, and then I'll follow the MCT towards uh, Collinsville. Where I park my car at the Culvers. Yeah, it's not going to be much, I don't think. I mean, I've not really checked the map between here and Edwardsville, so I am going to stock up. Mm. Cute little town. Bigger than I thought. Reminded me a bit like Cedar Town on the uh, Silver Comet Trail in Georgia. I like it. Nice town. Cute neighborhoods too. All right. So no wonder I didn't remember the name of this trail. It's called the the Quercus Grove Trail. Now, I have no idea who Quercus Grove is, but 
you know. He's got a trail named after him, so that's cool. It's all right, this one, though. It all, seems all paved right now. I'm going to go under the railroad tracks that I was following before. Didn't see any uh, Amtrak or nothing, though. There we go. The Quackers Grove Trail. Corn, corn, and more corn. Right up. Wind is blowing right in my face. Still on the uh, Quercus Grove Trail. Yep. Went through the towns of Warden, Hamel, after leaving Stornham, but probably about 10 miles north of Edwardsville. It's nice when I'm in this like tunnel of trees because I'm not getting the buffeting from the wind. But it's humid, I'm sweating a lot. I'm gonna make sure I keep hydrated. It is humid today. At least the sun's not beating down on me, you know. Thank good for, goodness for one minor advantage. Been a really nice day. I'm, I got a new, I got a new handlebar and it's carbon and I paid a lot of money for it. But I can't seem to get comfortable on the bars, like my old one. And I, I was having hand issues with my nerves, as you know. So I thought, well, maybe if I get a carbon handlebar, it'll help with the, the bouncing on the road, you know, the, the road vibration. More so than what I had before, be it steel or aluminium, or probably aluminium that I had before. But I just can't get comfortable on it. It's, it feels weird. So, maybe another thing I just got to get used to. Not particularly going too fast right now. I was flying into the wind there since Staunton. It seems to have dropped a little bit, which is nice. But thankfully today, I don't have a, a time limit. As I say, the, the lady wife's at home and she'll get the kids off the bus. And I can just saunter back at my own pace. The problem is that in, in random airing in an Audax, you have a time limit <laughs> and you can't dawdle and that's the thing. So I'm planning to go out on Sunday. Uh, I've got one day really to go out and uh, I might do a local perm. There's one that leaves Columbia and it's a 300k perm or there's, uh, there's one going on on Sunday in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's a 200k, but it's a five hour drive there, five hour drive back. I don't know if, uh, if that's doable. It'd be more expensive, obviously, I need hotel rooms and whatnot, but at least there'd be other people to have some camaraderie with, other than just me on my, on my Todd Sloan. We'll see you on Sunday. We'll see what I do on Sunday. On the home stretch now, heading towards Horseshoe Lake. I just passed the SIUE campus. 110k so far for the day. In about five hours. Slow and steady. A couple of stops. Bit of wind coming back from Staunton, but still, good day out on the bike. Good day out on the bike. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's all I, I can say. I mean, I've had that route planned up to Staunton for a while. I've just not really been, had the time to do it. It's nice, of, uh, nice to be able to get that one done. 124k or so by the time I get done. It's a fair clip. Fair clip when it's 85 degrees and humid. Oh, I stopped to put some suntan lotion on. And it just fell off my face. I managed to slather some on my arms and my legs. But I might end up... The sun came out. So I might end up with a bit of sunburn tonight. I'll be slathering on the aloe when I get home. But, uh... Yeah, almost done for the day. 
taking it slow. There's Horseshoe Lake ahead of me, so I'm going to turn back northish. So I should have the wind behind me. Back to the car, and then we'll see. We'll see how the uh, the phone charging situation went. So another one of Matt's great scientific cycling reviews. <laughs> Hardly. All right, we'll see you at the finish. All right, so that was a bit of a struggle bus at the end. The last 15k, the last 10 miles seemed to drag and drag and drag. Plus, as I say, it didn't help that the sun had come out and I was getting slowly cooked out there. I was sweating so much that I just couldn't keep suntan lotion on. But what are you going to do? Made it back six and a half hours. So, the moment of truth. Let's see how much charge I've got on this. Uh, let's see how much charge I've got on this phone. It's been charging all day on the sine wave beacon. Six hours, you know, just steady trickle charge. Let's see where we're at. I don't know if you can if I can focus in too hot but we're at 62 percent 62 percent you know so that's 62 percent of charge you wouldn't normally have you know without a power bank or, or a way to charge your phone and that you know if, if you want to do endurance rides I think that's the way to go I've, I've tried multiple different things as I said tried the Kasai trail beam uh, it was not a good light. I mean, you get what you paid for. It was like 40 bucks. It was, it was peanuts. But the, the, the light emitted wasn't good. I'm, I'm really impressed with the Sunway Beacon. The amount of blast of light you get from it is just exactly what you need when you're riding through the night. Um, I have tried the pedal cell um, on, a, on a gravel bike, on a touring bike. And I, I do think that the pedal cell has its place it's a way faster charger than the than the sine wave but obviously you've got to mount it on the the, the the front fork and it's not as discreet as a dynamo hub but yeah really happy with the sine wave beacon that's that's a good light and a good charge and you know that was the purpose of today it's not much of a review but i'm happy with it again six months of back order you know you're hoping it's worth it and it was it is you know i'm really happy with it all right 125k done today uh it's a, it a, it a bit of a slog at the end but uh hope you enjoyed the views and everything and we'll see you again soon